Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of this book, Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. I am also the host of the Effortless English Show. Pronunciation. Pronunciation is so important. If your pronunciation is bad, people don't understand you. Even if you have great grammar, you know a lot of grammar, your grammar is perfect. Doesn't matter. When your pronunciation is bad, people will not understand you. Even if you know a lot of vocabulary, a lot of words, if your pronunciation is bad, when you speak, people will look confused. You know the face, right? When you try to speak English and people make that face like they're confused. Huh? Huh? They say, huh? What? Huh? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, could you repeat that? Doesn't matter if your grammar's good. Doesn't matter if your vocabulary's good. If your pronunciation is bad, people won't understand you. This is why pronunciation is so, so, so important. In fact, it's probably the number one most important skill. When your pronunciation is bad, you will get a bad score on the TOEFL. You will get a bad score on the IELTS. You see, those tests, they have native speakers, people from the United States, or people from Britain, from England, that are giving you the score. And they listen to your recording, or they interview you. And when your pronunciation is bad, they give you a lower score. They, they can't help it. It's just natural. You know, recently, I told a story about visiting Vietnam. I visited Vietnam. And I talked to a lot of Vietnamese people. And one day, this girl asked me a question, Vietnamese girl. She asked me a question. One sentence, just one sentence. She said one sentence, asked me a quick question. And immediately I thought, she's a native speaker. I, I think she, she lived in America. At least she lived in America for a while. Just one sentence. I didn't know about her grammar or vocabulary really, not enough time. How did I know? How did I know her English was great? Why did I think that? Simply because her pronunciation was so, so good. She had an American accent. I mean, nearly perfect. A nearly perfect American accent. So just five seconds, ten seconds, I instantly knew, wow, her English is great. And in fact, I did talk to her, and in fact, she had lived in America. She had gone to a university in the United States for several years, so I was right. But I could tell, just five, ten seconds. Why? Pronunciation. When your pronunciation is great, people instantly respect you when you speak English. Just like me with that girl. Now, I didn't really know, I didn't really know if she was fluent, I didn't really know if she had great grammar, I didn't really know if her vocabulary was great, but just because of her pronunciation, instantly I had a very high respect for her English ability. It's the same if you take these tests, IELTS or TOEFL. When your pronunciation is excellent, you have a perfect American accent, they will give you a high score. Even if you make grammar mistakes. Even if you have some trouble with vocabulary. They will give you a high score when your pronunciation is really, really good. 
People will respect you if you're in a job situation or travel. Right? Do you know this feeling? You're traveling and you need help and you ask someone for help. Maybe you're in America, maybe you're in Europe and you ask for help and the person looks annoyed, right? Because they don't quite understand you. You have a difficult accent and they go, what, huh? And they make that kind of unfriendly face. That's because of pronunciation. They, they're having trouble understanding you. They can't quite understand you because of your pronunciation, because of your accent. So, it's so important. I think that pronunciation, it's, it's really the, the top skill. I mean, you need some vocabulary for sure to communicate. But if you have some vocabulary, basic vocabulary, and you can speak very clearly, you have a great accent, you can communicate well, even if you make mistakes. So the next question is how? How do you do it? Well, in my next video, I'm going to tell you some very specific techniques to improve your pronunciation. In this video, I'm going to talk about a more general idea. It's an idea that should be familiar to you. You need to learn pronunciation with your ears. Seems obvious, right? It's like music. And to be a great speaker, to speak with a perfect American accent, you need to do ear training. I did some research about pronunciation courses and I was quite surprised. Many, many pronunciation courses use a lot of text. They use the phonetic alphabet. It's called IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. And they try to teach students good pronunciation with this alphabet. That's a terrible, terrible way to improve your pronunciation. It doesn't really work. Why? Because pronunciation is music. It's the music of the language. And to say the language correctly, to be good with the music of English, you first must hear it correctly. You must hear those sounds correctly. There are lots of little sounds, lots of little sounds that make a perfect American accent. Right now, you probably don't hear most of them. There are probably many sounds that you're not quite hearing correctly. There's also a rhythm to English. This is so super important. Yet, I look at most pronunciation courses, they don't teach rhythm. But if, when you get the rhythm of English correct, when you speak it correctly with the correct rhythm, people will understand you much, much better just by improving that. Super important. So you've got to train your ears. You have to be like a jazz musician. See, jazz musicians, they learn to play by ear. Right? They can hear some song and then they can play it back to you immediately all by ear. They don't need to read music. Well, that's how you have to learn pronunciation. Another thing I found in a lot of pronunciation courses, they just teach like one word at a time, or maybe two. It's really strange, like they'll teach you sit, sat, sit, sat, and you'll just say those two words again and again. Well, that's crazy, and that's, that's not a nor normal conversation to have full phrases, full sentences. You need to pronounce full phrases, full sentences correctly with a great accent. In fact, you really need to pronounce full paragraphs, several sentences. You need to be able to talk and talk and talk, lots and lots and lots of words, lots of sentences, and all the time your accent is perfect or great. So practicing just one or two words at a time, that's a terrible way. It's not going to help your pronunciation. It doesn't work. It's also super boring, right? So, ear training. Why, why is this familiar? Because effortless English, what's our first most important skill? Listening. Listening is super important for fluency, for learning to speak quickly and effortlessly for learning vocabulary, for learning correct spoken grammar. Well, listening is also super, super important 
for pronunciation. But there's a little difference. For pronunciation, you have to change your focus a little, right? When you're listening, when you're just trying to learn English, the words, the meaning, you want to speak fluently, well then you focus your listening more on meaning, right? But for pronunciation, when you're trying to improve your accent, when you want that perfect American accent, well then you need to listen a little differently. Learn the meaning, yes, but then you must focus on that music. Now in my new pronunciation course, I teach you which elements, which parts to focus on. I mentioned rhythm, that's one, right? Rhythm. Rhythm, it's, it's really the pattern of pauses. If I just talk without words, if I say nonsense, you can still hear the rhythm of English. No, 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 that's the rhythm right there. See, that's rhythm. That's rhythm. That is super important for your accent. That is so important. This is probably the number one biggest pronunciation problem I hear from most English learners. They're using the wrong rhythm when they speak English. They're using the rhythm of their own language. See, Japanese, for example, has a quite different rhythm. Even I don't understand Japanese, but I can hear the rhythm of Japanese. I can hear that. I can hear the rhythm, and it's different than English. The problem is, if a Japanese person speaks English, and they use the Japanese rhythm, it sounds so strange. And it's actually difficult for most people to understand. Well, it's the same thing. If you're a Spanish speaker, if you use Spanish rhythm with English, it will sound strange and will be hard to understand. So just learning to hear the rhythm correctly and then, of course, speak with the correct rhythm, this will help so much with your accent, with your pronunciation. Now, of course, there are other parts of English as well. You have rhythm, you have pitch, that's when you go up and down, like singers, right? It's a scale. Ha 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 and then do it. But you gotta hear it first. You gotta hear it perfectly first, then you'll be able to do it much more easily. What else do we have? Of course we have a, a pattern of stress or loudness, right? So we stress certain words. This also is part of rhythm, by the way. Well again, English has a way of stressing words, of getting louder or softer, that's different than other languages. You have to learn to hear it, and then you'll later be able to do it. So, so important. And then finally, finally after all of that, you finally will get to those individual sounds. Now, each person has different sounds that are difficult. For some people, that R and L sound, oh, those two are tough. Hard to do them correctly. Especially the American R is quite strong, right? We Americans, we like to pronounce our R's quite strongly. And especially at the end of words like computer, water, we have a nice strong R sound. For some people, that's very tough. Even if you have an R sound, for example, Spanish speakers, they have an R sound. But the Spanish R is not quite the same as the American R. If you pronounce it like Spanish, it will sound a little weird. Water. It, it, it just it won't sound correct. And therefore, it will be harder to understand. So you need to learn each of those. In my course, I'm going to teach you all those little sounds, those common, difficult sounds. Vowels and consonants, both. But the thing is, the little sounds, those are the last things you learn in my course. You're going to start with the rhythm. I'm going to train you, teach you and train you to use the correct rhythm. I'm going to teach you and train you to use the right pitch, the right up and down, the right stress. And then finally, there's what I call just the feeling of a language. And it's hard to say what that is exactly, but there's a certain emotion, a certain feeling 
it's kind of psychological, it's emotional. That is also super important. I listen to Italian, I, I hear a kind of a, there's kind of feel to Italian. It's hard to say exactly what it is, but Italian has a certain feeling. And Italian speakers, they move their body a certain way when they speak. It's different than Americans who speak English. Japanese people, same thing. I can just watch Japanese people speaking, just their body movements. Different than Americans when we speak English. You've got to learn that too, that feeling, which includes the nonverbal part. It seems strange, but, but that nonverbal part and that emotion will help your pronunciation a lot. It will give you that great, perfect American accent. All right, so in my next video, I'll send to you in a few days, I'm going to give you a few more very specific techniques to help you improve your pronunciation. These techniques are things you can do any day with any audio to practice train and improve your pronunciation so that you get that perfect American accent so you'll be respected every time you speak English. All right, finally, get my audio book. My audio book, it's, it's my same book that I showed you, but it's the audio version. It's me, personally, reading the book. Start listening to that. You can listen to my pronunciation. You can start hearing the rhythm, the pitch, all of those things. My audiobook is free now. Free! Free for you. <laughs> okay, so just go to EffortlessEnglish.com. That's my book website. EffortlessEnglish.com. Middle of the page, enter your email. That's all you need to do. Enter your email, EffortlessEnglish.com. I will send you my free, the whole thing, my free audiobook, my entire book that you can listen to. All right, the next video is coming in a few days. I'll teach you those specific tips. For now, effortlessenglish.com. Get my free audiobook. See you soon. Bye for now.